Hello there. Come and have a sit down. You know, we're in strange times and I do know that there are some people who are feeling a tad isolated. Uh, so I thought we could just have a bit of a chat. Uh, when I'm at home, I'll be honest with you, I'm quite quiet uh, and a bit private, um, but I would like to invite you into my favourite room in our house. It's the one, as you can see, uh, with all the books. When things are taking a bit of a low turn, which they do for everybody at some point, uh, this is the place I come to find a bit of calm. I think we all need to find the positive in this enforced separation from the world, and the bit I'm finding is how lovely to have the time uh, to dip in and out of some ancient volume I haven't looked at for ages. Uh, I struggled a great deal with loneliness when I was a child, and it was always books which kept me company. Uh, this one here is one of my favourites. It's called The Book of Days. Actually, uh, the full title is fantastic. It's The Book of Days, a miscellany of popular antiquities in connection with the calendar, including anecdote, biography and history, curiosities of literature and oddities of human life and character. Isn't that great? I mean... If they make it into a movie, it's a terrible title, but for a book. So this uh, lovely uh, leather-bound version is from 1878, although the book was first published uh, 14 years earlier. It was written by a Scottish author, Robert Chambers. I love it because it's slightly bonkers. Um, it's as though Chambers sat down uh, to write something every day that just occurred to him. He just sort of meandered about with whatever he found interesting. So it works uh, like a calendar with information about each day of the year and it never ceases to spark what I call a chain of curiosity. Uh, I have always, always found comfort in history. Lots of my books are about history. Uh, I really like knowing what human beings have managed to struggle through in the past. So let's take a quick look at what Robert thought significant about today, which is March the 21st. So... I'm mean, going to be honest with you, it doesn't start well. You know, it's not exactly cheerful. Mm. March the 21st, uh, Edmund of Woodstock, Earl of Kent, beheaded 1330. That's it. There's no detail. Uh, uh, 1330. I don't think, you know, it means half past one. That was, it was a long time ago. Uh, so then I think, well, what do I know about Edmund of Woodstock? Uh, well, I know that Edward III had him killed. Uh, he was the king. He was only 18 at the time. And I think, you know, it says something about letting young people be in charge because nobody at the time thought this was the right thing to do. It was just a bit of bad temper on the king's part. In fact, uh, they had to get a convicted murderer to do the beheading in exchange for a pardon. I don't know wh why they did... I remember the general thinking was that a murderer must know how to do it. I mean, I wouldn't know where to begin. Well, I imagine at the top. But anyway. So far, all a bit miserable. But then you come to Charlotte Tremouille, Countess of Derby, and she is fantastic. I am always seeking out great women in history, but so often they fall through the cracks of recorded time. Uh, she is described here as simply heroic defender of Latham House and the Isle of Man, 1663. So I don't know why she's here in March the 21st. I think, I think maybe Chambers is suggesting that's the day she passed away. Um, but oh my goodness, what a life she had first. I should love to have met her. So if we wanted to meet her, we have to go back to the very first English Civil War. That kicked off uh, in 1642. Uh, what was it about? Well, I'm going to be honest, like so many wars, it all seems a bit silly now. Uh, but if you wanted to pick teams, uh, you either had to be on the side of the Royalists or the Parliamentarians. So Charlotte was a Royalist. Uh, she lived in Latham House, um, which I like. It sounds like something mid-terrace, doesn't it? But it's actually a fabulous castle. So Charlotte came to live there from France, where she was born in 1599. So I think for this story, uh, you need to imagine she had an excellent accent. She married the seventh Earl of Derby and she moved to his house. And I think this move demonstrates the general confusion with titles in this country because he was the Earl of Derby, but the castle was in Lancashire. Yeah, I don't think the titles have all that much meaning. I once met the Duke of Kent and I stuck for conversation. So I told him how much I liked Kent. Uh, to which she replied, yes, I've never really been. Anyway, during the war, uh, Charlotte's husband was sent off by the king to do royalist things on the Isle of Man and left Charlotte at home. Then, February 1644, I want you to imagine the tension. Parliamentary forces turned up at the door. Well, it was a castle, the drawbridge, maybe, demanding the castle for themselves. I think the soldiers thought, Charlotte was in charge, it's a woman, it's going to be a pushover. Now, first of all, the important thing to remember, back then, war had a little bit more decorum about it. It was all very politely done. Uh, Sir Thomas Fairfax, who was in charge of the besieging parliamentary forces, he didn't just start shooting. He knocked on the door, popped in, asked Charlotte would she mind surrendering. 
She said, I don't know, surrendering is quite a big ask, you know, I need a week to think about it. And then apparently he thought that was reasonable, uh, and so he left. I don't know what he was going to do that week, I imagine camping with his men, I don't know. Uh, so meanwhile, Charlotte, she had a week, she cracked on. She gathered anybody who was good with a gun and happy to be on her side. Uh, so you have to imagine, 2,000 parliamentary soldiers outside, but she did manage to muster a small army of 300. Go, girl. I mean, I feel besieged in my house. I, I haven't been able to muster a toilet roll. So a week later, the soldiers outside who were besieging, they got fed up, started firing cannons at her. But Charlotte held on for months. She would not give in uh, until a load of royalist forces, the ones on her side, turned up and finally helped her to get out. So she went off to see her husband on the Isle of Man. Uh, she, by now she'd got into it. She also spent a load of time on the island refusing to surrender. Uh, spoiler alert, I'm afraid her side lost in the end. But there are those that say Charlotte had the glory of being the very last person in the three kingdoms, so Scotland, England and Ireland, who submitted to the victorious rebels. She was courageous in a way no woman at the time could ever have been expected to be. And hats off to her. And so this is what happens, this is my chain of curiosity. It reminded me uh, that there was a poem written uh, about the siege of Charlotte's Castle by a woman called Letitia Elizabeth Landon. I don't think she's all that well known these days, um, but other women poets like Elizabeth Barrett Browning and Christina Rossetti, they thought she was fat. I think she's fat. Uh, Letitia was an English poet and novelist. She was born in 1802 in London. If you're going to look for her work, you may find she was better known by her initials, uh, L-E-L, -E uh, because heaven knows you couldn't really enjoy a poem back then if you knew a woman had thought of it. Anyway, her poetry is wonderful, and I wanted to read a bit from her verse entitled Lord and Lady Derby, uh, which commemorates Charlotte Tremoul's tremendous courage. Uh, it's a good piece, uh, I think, uh, for those who are having to dig deep at the moment and find courage, uh, I think it feels really good to hear it right now. It is funny how you can so often find what you are looking for in the present somewhere in the past. So here's the poem. Tis in such troubled times the few find they have powers they never knew. And yonder high-born dame who stands with flowerets in her graceful hands with broidered robe and ringlet fair, scarce breathed on by the fragrant air, dreamed not that she should stand alone when pikes were raised and trumpets blown, and gathered foes around the wall, and she sole chief in Latham Hall. But ere she put aside her fears, and woman's weakness, woman's tears, how many a long and anxious hour she must have passed in secret bower, till she stepped forth, the calm and proud, to meet and animate the crowd. And I love that. Tis in such troubled times the few find they have powers they never knew. And, and I do think that's true today. I think that's what we're finding. I also think it's time to reach out, meet, and animate the crowd. If you feel isolated, then I am sending you a huge virtual hug. Uh, do read if you can, you will be less alone. Uh, read and give the choice of what to do. Be kind. Honestly, it's usually easier. I'll be back. Take care.